The Peerless Assassin 120 Digital ARGB CPU Cooler from Thermalright. That's what we're looking at today. That's the box. The tried and tested Peerless Assassin 120. Apparently, one of the very best value CPU coolers uh, that you will find. Um, and it's available for just about any different type of CPU, uh, which is great. You get all everything that you need for fitment in the box for all different types of uh, CPUs. And um, yeah, AM5, AM4, all the Intel sockets. Um, and what I'll do, I actually put all of the specifications up on the screen right now so you can see what that's all about. Uh, but what's so special about this cooler? Um, well, for the price, I must say, the price, this, I picked this up for, I think it was 80, $86 Australian. For that, uh, it is quite good. It's quite cheap. And it is a little bit more expensive because I got the digital version. And the reason that I'm making this video is because I couldn't find anywhere on YouTube a video of the digital version of this CPU cooler so I thought I would make one because I decided to take a risk and go and buy it see what it's all about so what's so different between this one and the usual uh, Peerless Assassin 120 so the main thing is is that a this is ARGB which is great and also this has the digital display on it so the one thing that I like about this is that you can just have a look over your shoulder and have a look at your PC to see what the temps are. And you can check out your CPU and your GPU temps directly off this and also how much percentage of usage. And there's a lot of other options there. Let's have a look and see how well this cooler performs. Yeah, what's it like? Is it worth buying? Is it worth picking up? So First off, I should start with uh, what my computer actually has in it in terms of fans so you guys can get an understanding of what I'm running and how it affects the rest of the airflow in the case. Uh, so the case I've just installed into is the Montec King 95 Pro and that comes factory with six fans. Uh, there's another three fans that I've purchased as some AX fans is what they're called, uh, which are exhausting from the top. And I've also put another two aftermarket intake fans, 120s on the front. Um, so all up, we've got about 13 fans in there. It is working on um, virtually an intake from underneath, an intake from the front, an intake from the side, and then everything on the top and the back is exhaust. It's pretty much how we're running. Uh, so I thought that would be the most efficient way to do it. And it seems to be pretty efficient at the moment, I must say, which is quite good, but I still will be running more tests. Um, one thing that I do have, I do have a large GPU in there, as you can see, uh, that is a 5080 uh, from Pallet, and that GPU is pretty much the same size as a 5090 because it has the same cooler on it as a 5090, so that blocks quite a lot of the airflow coming up from underneath. Um, and I will be vertically mounting that soon. So hopefully that might change a few things. Um, but yeah, that is what we're running right now. So that could give you a good indication. So the CPU that I use, uh, I have my Peels Assassin 120 bolted to a 5800X3D chip, uh, AM4 obviously. And it's pretty much, it's known to be a hot running chip. Um, and the best way to get the best performance out of this chip is to undervolt. So I'm running an undervolt of negative 15 on all cores. Um, so the maximum CPU temp that I get from this cooler is 75 degrees uh, when it's under full load. And then the idle temp is around 45 degrees, depending on how hot or cold my room is pretty much because I've got so many fans. Uh, so yeah, that'll give you an indication of how well it runs, but I did want to talk about a few pros and cons of this cooler uh, Because this is what I was looking for when I went shopping for this So we'll start with the pros. So I think it performs very well for the price Very well for the price. I was really surprised um, The value was quite good. The value the build quality was surprising to me. I thought it was really really good I had a Noctua um, CPU fan on this beforehand, but it was a little bit small uh, for the CPU, so I decided to upgrade to this. 
Um, the quality is not quite Noctua level, but you don't really expect that because Noctua is like three times the price. Uh, but it is, but it is quite good quality to be honest. Thermal right, I've done a great job with this. Uh, it's relatively quiet, to be honest. It's it's relatively quiet when it's under the right PWM fan curve. You've got to work with this thing. You can't just plug it in, switch it on, and off you go. And I'll explain that l later. Uh, the RGB, it's quite nice and quite good. To be honest, it looks good and it's nice and bright, which is excellent. Um, the CPU, and, the, and this is the main thing that I wanted to know, is the CPU and the GPU digital readout, you know, what is that like? It's actually very adjustable, and I was surprised. Um, it's also really large and quite easy to read, uh, so it's not very small, and that's what I wanted, something I can just quickly look at, uh, so that, that was really good. The RGB wiring actually has splitters for the ARGB, so that was really helpful, and the wiring is also quite long, like quite long, so you do actually get a lot of options. Okay, so let's get on to the cons. Now the cons is the software uh, from Thermalright and Thermalright's website is quite primitive. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They really need to update that or they need to get someone in there to rebuild them a new website. But other than that, it works fine when you download the software. Um, they, they have English versions. I can't find a way with that software to save profiles. So it does save the settings that you currently have. Um, but yeah, you can't seem to save profiles, which is a bummer. Um, the software is always asking for administrator access as well, which is quite annoying uh, and maybe a little bit unnerving for some people. But uh, yeah, you do have to run it in admin. And I think that's to get the signals from the sensors, but I'm not 100% sure. I found that screwing on the CPU cooler uh, to the brackets with just those little screwdriver, uh, the little screws, the Phillip heads that go straight through into the brackets, I found that was relatively difficult for me. And I've fitted a few coolers in my time, but this was kind of like, I had to really push down just to get them started. And then you had to really push down on the other side to just get it started. Uh, it was a little unnerving, I must say. Um, so I wasn't 100% comfortable with it and it took a little bit longer than I planned. Uh, so that that's something to look out for. Uh, the factory fan curve, like I spoke about before, uh, if you just leave it the way it is, it'll go 100% the fans and you'll hear a whistle. It'll get a whistle up at 100% and it's quite irritating, quite annoying. I wouldn't recommend running this at 100%. I've got mine set at 80% and that seems to do quite a good job. There's a little bit of a whistle, a tiny little bit, but it's not huge. Uh, so some people have negated this whistling sound by changing their um, fans, taking them off and putting other fans on. I have heard of another guy who actually took the front fan off and just ran the middle fan and still gets the same performance. I haven't tested that, but that could be a good option. Uh, but there can be a whistle sound, but I've still run in the two fans and I've just turned down the fan curve and set it the way I wanted it and set it down to 80% max, and it's usable for me. Usable. It is a little bit louder than my Noctua, I must say, but it's not the end of the world. Um, the fin array and also the fans all together is quite big, as you'll see. It is quite, quite big. Uh, so you want to make sure that you measure up your case and measure up everything and make sure it's going to fit. I didn't do that. I took a bit of a risk. Uh, and yeah, let's just say that that front fan you can move it up higher so it will um it is adjustable it's not just in the one position and quite easy to do but yeah it doesn't fit on my over my ram sticks um it actually has to be adjusted to fit over those ram sticks so and i could see that that would be a problem for a lot of boards so just keep that in mind when you do this and i think i that's why i like the um the digital readout too because that makes it look a bit better whereas if that wasn't there it would just look like the fan was offset to everything so it wouldn't look so good but um i think it looks quite good the way it is now so something to look out for yeah but other than that 
the the way this cooler performs i really can't see any issue with it like functionally it's really really good uh under full load it seems to hold temperature really really well and for the price i don't think you can go wrong like if you don't want the digital version don't get it i don't think you're missing out on anything uh but i like the digital version i think it looks really good and it doesn't seem to affect the cooling in any way shape or form so yeah other than that i like it it was a pretty good buy i'm pretty happy with it and i'm interested to see when i vertical mount my gpu what effect that does have on the cooling but uh, other than that guys thank you guys for watching i appreciate it i hope this helped you and i'll see you in the next video like and subscribe if you wish peace Thank you.